Today we're going to be talking about percentiles. Unlike quartiles, which we talked about yesterday, percentiles are actually used in real life all the time. You hear about them on the news, you hear about them in the media, so it's really important that we know what they mean. So what is percentile? Here's that same data set that we looked at yesterday, and the day before that, and probably the day before that. Yesterday we put it in ascending order, and we worked out what the different quartiles were. So we said that quartiles split the data up into four equal parts. That means that below quartile 1 is 25% of the data. So we could call quartile 1 the 25th percentile. We said quartile 2, which is the median, splits the data in half, which means that everything below it comprises 50% of the data. So instead of calling it quartile 2 or the median, we could call this value the 50th percentile. And similarly, quartile 3 is 3 quarters of the way through the data, so we could call this the 75th percentile, meaning that 75% of the data lies below it. So we, what do we mean when we say percentile? Percentile divides the data into 100 equal portions. Whereas quartile yesterday was four equal portions, percentile is 100. Now this may seem counterintuitive because here in this data set, for example, I only have seven values. So how can it be cut into 100 pieces? Well, we really mostly use percentile for large data sets. So we don't often use it for these small ones, but it's useful to see how it works with the smaller data sets. The percentile is the data point that is above a certain percentage. So like I said before, our 25th percentile lies above 25% of the data. We'll talk about that more in a second. And again, we use percentile more for large data sets like um, marks in an entire grade or matric exam scores in the whole country or that type of thing. We don't often use it for small sets. Let's look at a few examples to try and understand what we mean when we say percentile. Let's say your teacher won't tell you your mark on a test, but she tells you that you scored in the 84th percentile. Is this a good or a bad thing? Well, what this means is that 84% of people scored below you. So this, to me, is a really good thing. Regardless of the actual mark that you got, you did better than 84% of people. So that's a good thing. Let's say you run the 1500 meter race in five minutes, which is the 90th percentile. Remember, just like with quartiles, when we do percentiles, the data is in ascending order. So if you're running in the 90th percentile, it means that 90% of people are getting a time that's lower than you. And you know that when you run, you want the lowest time possible, the fastest time possible. So the 90th percentile in this case isn't really that good because 90% of people are faster than you. Let's say an infant is in the fifth percentile for weight based on its age. That means that 5% of babies are way less than that baby does. Well, this is probably not a good thing. It's maybe, maybe just a case to go to the doctor and try and figure out what's going on because it means that most babies weigh more than this baby does for its age. Let's say you score 35 out of 100 on a test. This is the 80th percentile. What can we conclude about the test? Well, if you are in the 80th percentile, it means that 80% of people scored lower than you did. But a score of 35 out of 100 is not very good. So it's not normally something we'd be happy with. So what can we say about this test? If 80% of people are getting a score lower than 35, then it was probably a really hard test.
Last one, let's say you score 71% on your matric exam, which is in the 90th percentile. Was your achievement better or worse than most others that took the exam? Hopefully you're seeing by now, even if you're not happy with the 71% score, if it's in the 90th percentile, that still means you're doing better than 90% of the people who took the exam. So that's pretty good. 90% of the other students scored lower than you did. So let's look at how to calculate percentile using that same old example that we've been carrying through for the last few lessons. First, we're going to find the 25th and the 50th percentiles. Again, remember that 25th percentile is the same as quartile 1, and 50th is quartile 2. And we've already worked these out, so we're just going to double check our answers there. Then we're going to determine the 70th percentile. And I've just chosen this arbitrarily. We could choose any different percentile to figure out. We could even do the first percentile or the 99th percentile. Just like with quartiles, when we do percentiles, our values must be in ascending order. So we're going to use that same old stem and leaf plot that we used last time. And I'm just going to put up, since we've already worked out what the quartiles are, I'm just going to put those up for reference so that we can see if our answers are the same. Okay, so we wanted the 25th percentile, which we know is the same as quartile 1. Just like with quartiles, I'm going to figure out the position of the 25th percentile. Now, in percentiles, we use this thing called an index, which is just another word for position of 25th percentile. It's just a shorter way of writing it. And your book shortens that to I. I use I sub 25 just to make it very clear, but your book just says I. Your book gives this formula P over 100 times N, which I think is a little bit more complicated than it even needs to be. Okay, so look what we do. To figure out the 25th percent of the data set, all I'm doing is taking 0, 0,25, which is 25%, and I'm multiplying it by the number of values in the set. So 0, 0,25 times 66 tells me that 16,5 is a quarter of the way or 25% of the way through the data. Now, if I counted 16,5 like before, this would tell me I was in between two values. But that would put me between 32 and 33. And we know that the 25th percentile is supposed to be 33. So what this tells me is that when I have a decimal, when my index is a decimal, I need to round up. And I'm rounding up because we said percentile is the value above which everything is 25%. Okay. So that means that the position of the 25th percentile is the 17th, and if I count through, then I'll get the value is 33. So the 25th percentile is 33. Now we're going to do the same thing for 50th percentile, but we're going to take it much faster. Okay, so take 50% of my total values. So I use 0.5 times 66. Remember, if you have the Casio, you could type this in using the percentage sign. But be so careful because you have to have the percentage sign if you do this. I prefer using the decimal. When we do this, we get a whole number of 33. But if I were to go to the 33rd value, that would be 46. If I were to count out all the values, the 33rd value is 46. But I see that my quartile 2, or my 50th percentile, is supposed to be 46,5. So what that means is if you get a whole number here, then you need to take the average of this value and the one above it. Meaning I'm going to take the average of 46 and 47 and divide by 2 to get 46,5. One more example for 70th percentile. We take 70% of the total number of values, 
70% of 66 gives me 46 comma 2. And we said that whenever we have a decimal, so 46 comma 2 is obviously a decimal, whenever we have a decimal, we round up to the next nearest whole number. So that means that the 70th percentile is in the 47th position. And I would count out up to 47, and I'd land round about here, where 56 is the 47th position. So that puts it in the 70th percentile. Easy peasy. So in summary, here are the steps you need to take. Arrange the data in ascending order if it's not already. Compute the index, which is the position of the percentile, where n is the number of data values. There's that formula again that the book has, but really to me, I just take the percentage of the number of values. If you get a decimal, you round up. And if you get a whole number, then you have to take the average between that value that's in that position and the one immediately after it. You then, what's not listed here is that you're then going to count out to figure out what the actual value in the set is. So you do not answer with the index value. That's not the right thing. You have to give your answer as the value in the set that is at that position. So here's a real life example of percentile, especially for those of you who love to gym. Percentiles are often used in health kind of measurements. So in this example, we're going to talk about BMI. Those of you who are athletes or who like to gym might know that BMI stands for body mass index. And it's a measure of how much fat you have in your body. So people who have a high BMI are considered to be overweight and even obese. And then doctors can very quickly tell them, okay, you're at risk of diabetes or heart disease, you need to exercise, you need to eat better, etc." It's not a perfect measure, so there are a lot of limitations, like a rugby player, for example, might be told that he's obese when really he's quite heavy just because he's carrying so much muscle. So people who are really athletic often don't have very accurate um, measures in terms of BMI. But let's go with it anyway. The formula for BMI is weight in kilograms divided by height squared, and height is in meters. So as an example, and you're going to do this in, as part of your exit form today. As an example, let's say that a 16-year-old boy has a weight of 60 kilograms and a height of 1,73 meters. Substituting into our formula, we get 20,05 as the BMI, and that would be in kilograms per meter squared. And we're going to round that to one decimal place, so that ends up being 20,1. Now let's go back to our chart and see how this works out. So here's a chart that shows a lot of information. The age of, now this is just for boys, the age is on the x-axis, and BMI is on the y-axis. So let's plot for this boy, 16 years old, with a BMI of very close to 20. is going to be roughly there where my laser pointer is, and let's put my point there. Okay, so there's my point. Now to read the percentile, I need to follow along this curved line. So the percentile in this case, my point is just below the 50th percentile line. There's 50th percentile, which means I can estimate it's maybe around about 45%. So 45th percentile, it's very much square within this green band. And the green band I see is the healthy weight category. So I could, if I were this child, I would feel quite comfortable with um, my body fat. For homework tonight, you have just one problem. On page 232, it's exercise 4a. Then for those of you who are very keen, you can attempt the extension in exercise b. But good luck with that one. Uh, that's all I have to say. Okay, enjoy.